Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a Samba file sharing server on your phone which will make your device visible to Windows PCs on your home network and will also enable you to access your micro SD card as a network shared folder. Now being able to access the SD card as a proper shared folder has a number of advantages over the FTP server method that I showed you in the last video. However, in order to use this method you will need to have a rooted phone uh, with the latest version of SuperUser installed. So the first thing we need to do is download and install a copy of Samba file sharing which is by the developer Funky Fresh. It should be fairly easy to find on the, uh, the Play Store but just in case I'll stick some details in the bottom corner of the screen. Before you launch the app for the first time it might also be worthwhile sticking a shortcut to the app on your home screen as I think I might use that a few times uh, as we go through the tutorial. So if we launch the app for the first time you'll get this prompt asking you to grant super user access. You need to accept that and then press OK to the next box that comes up. And what you're faced with is a black screen that just tells you that there's no password set. What we need to do is press the menu button and go to settings. Now if you look in here you'll see that everything other than the option to enter a password is greyed out. So what we need to do is tap on password and enter a password of your choice. I'm just going to put in here Bugsy. Remembering of course that passwords are case sensitive. Then all of these options you'll see are now available. Moving down to the next one we'll tap on username. A default username is already set, it's set to SD card but uh, just so I can remember it I'm going to change it to Bugsy. Not that SD card is particularly difficult to remember. And press OK. The work group name you just need to make sure that this is set to the same as what you have set on your PCs. Assuming you have an English version of Windows and you haven't specifically changed it, um, then it will already be set to work group. However, if you have changed it or, for example, you have a non-English version of Windows, you might need to double check. The NetBIOS name, this is a name by which your phone will be seen on the network. So, in my case, the phone will be showing as Android and I'll leave that as it is. I'm not going to touch anything in other file share settings or wake locks for now. Um, obviously feel free to check them out, but uh, what I'm going to do at this point is look in the Wi-Fi whitelist. And in here you can specify individual networks where file sharing will be enabled. Um, and what we need to do is tap on here, edit Wi-Fi whitelist. And here you can see that's my uh, router or router, whatever you want to call it, and by ticking this I can say I want to have file sharing enabled on this network and save. For that to work of course I need to now tick here enable whitelist mode. Now what you see here is a prompt asking you to, uh, to start the, uh, the server. I'm going to press start and it will launch the server. Now if your uh, phone appears to hang at this point check uh, the description box below because uh, I might uh, might have located what the problem is there. Okay, but assuming everything's uh, gone to plan there and the server's running, just press back a couple of times and you can see that it says now enabled running, it shows the IP address of the phone and the name of the phone. So just take note of those and we'll move over to the computer. So here we are on the computer. Um, this is a Windows 7 PC. If you have a different operating system, I'll try to add some details to help you in the description box in the next day or so. Uh, what we're going to do first though is just double check that the phone is actually showing on the uh, the local network. Now assuming you don't have shortcuts on the desktop as I do all you need to do is click on the start button and then left click on computer. That'll bring up the uh, overview of all your local drives and then just on the left hand side here scroll down and left click on network and all being well your phone is now showing up in that list. Uh, if not, you might have to hit the refresh button, but that uh, should cause it to pop up. So we'll go back to where we were with the overview of our drives. And here in this white empty space at the bottom, all we're going to do is right click and select Add Network Location. This will bring up the Add Network Location wizard in the same way as uh, we did this on the uh, FTP server video last time. We'll press Next. Just make sure that this option here is highlighted. Choose a custom network location and press next again. Okay, in the network address field that we've got here, we could type in backslash backslash and then the, 
the name of the phone, but probably the easiest thing to do is just hit the browse button on the uh, right hand side here. And when you do that, the list of networked devices should appear in this list here. And we're going to choose Android. Now it's asking for the username and password that we uh, entered in the app on the phone before. So I put in Bugsy and Bugsy. And I'm going to tick Remember Password. It's listed as Remember My Credentials, but that's uh, the same thing. Press OK. And now you'll see that the uh, a folder tree has appeared showing the SD card or internal storage of your phone and all the subfolders. Now you could select an individual folder if you want, but I'm just going to select the SD card and press OK. And there's the, uh, the address in there. We'll just press Next. Here it's asking for a name for your phone or for the, uh, the shortcut that's going to appear in your computer. Um, call, I'm just going to put HTC Sensation press next and for the purpose of the video I'm going to untick this option to open the folder when we're done because it will appear in uh, in the computer anyway and hit finish and as you can see the shortcut has uh, now appeared here and I can quite simply double click on that to gain full access to uh, the contents of the SD card on my phone quite literally as if it was a, uh, a local folder now Anyone who uh, watched my last video involving the FTP server might actually be wondering, well, what exactly is the difference between the two? Um, there are some differences, and uh, just before moving from the phone to the computer, I also enabled an FTP server on the phone so that uh, I could give you a direct comparison. So what I'm going to do is just go into the folder containing my photos, and using the right mouse button, I'm going to drag a shortcut onto my desktop. I'll rename it and call it uh, Samba, Samba Demo. And then I'm going to close this window down. Now what I'm going to do is bring across another shortcut that I created earlier. Now, this shortcut links to exactly the same location on the phone, however it will access the phone via FTP. Um, so if I double click on this one first, you'll see that it brings up uh, the contents of the folder. There are a handful of photos and three videos and I could quite easily select those and copy them across to the computer without any trouble. However, I can't see any details other than the image, uh, the file name and uh, file size, nor can I interact with them in the same way as I would on the computer. Um, the other thing is, if I try to double click on a picture, it's going to open up in my web browser and um, with the videos, it will do the same. Uh, if you've got the relevant plugin, it will play in the browser, otherwise the browser will actually ask you to download them as if it was a file you were downloading from the internet. Um, on the other hand, if I just close that and open up the link that we've just created for the Samba file sharing server, you'll immediately see a difference. I can click on an individual picture or file. In this case, it's a, a picture so I can see the EXIF data. I can right click on the file and interact with it in exactly the same way as I would on my computer. Um, I see that a couple of videos here haven't uh, actually got previews available with them, uh, but at least if I click on them, I can see the file size, the length, it has actually brought a preview up there, um, and all the relevant details about it. And in exactly the same way as before, I can quite happily right drag and copy them over to my uh, PC. Um, also, unlike the uh, FTP method, if I was to take a, pic a video like this and double click on it, it will actually open up in your normal uh, media player as well. Okay, um, they're the main differences between the two, so I'm going to finish off now by going back to the phone and just finish off over there. So just to finish off with the phone, I'm sure one of the things that people noticed is that the phone didn't go to sleep while we were on the computer. And that's because with the way the app is configured at the moment, and it's indicated here by Wake Lock Active, as long as the app is active in the foreground, the phone won't go to sleep. There are some additional settings for uh, when you're on your home screen to keep your Wi-Fi connection permanently open. But as it is at the moment, if I tap the home screen, I can still access the phone from my computer. The server is still running, but the phone will go to sleep as normal, and when your Wi-Fi connection gets disabled, you'll get cut off from the network. And all you need to do is just make sure that the app is active in the foreground and your phone will stay awake. The last thing I guess is 
how do you enable and disable the server on demand because I'm sure most people won't want to have it running the whole time on the phone. And the way you do that is simply by tapping on the Samba logo. That will disable the server. You can go back to your home screen and everything's finished with. So if you want to connect to your phone at a later date, it's just a case of launching the app, tapping on the Samba logo. It takes five or six seconds and then uh, you're ready to go again. Okay, I apologize for the fact that the video was very dark at the start. My camera does have some difficulties with dark menus, but um, I hope you found that useful and uh, I'll say bye for now.